Antwerp in Belgium is famous for its art, fashion and being a big player in the diamond business because of its busy port. However, it's not all fancy and exciting there. Just take a drive around and you'll see why. The city has a serious traffic issue that's affecting not only the people living there and the businesses, but also other parts of Europe. But there's good news. Antwerp is working on a huge construction project, something it's been trying to finish for years. This project is massive and involves turning the area around the city into a huge construction zone. They're building some of the most amazing engineering works Belgium has ever seen, like tunnels under rivers, roads inside canals, and big new parks. This is why construction is so fascinating. But before we go into the fascinating details of the project, please make sure to like, share and subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more amazing videos. Antwerp is in a great spot for international trade. It's close to the Netherlands, Germany, Brussels and the North Sea. It holds one of the biggest seaports in the world. Big roads from these places all meet at Antwerp, especially at a road called the Antwerp Ring Road. But there's a catch. Even though it's called a ring road, it's not really shaped like a ring. That makes driving from one place to another pretty annoying. In 2022, drivers were stuck in traffic for 61 hours on average, partly because this road isn't finished yet. The two existing tunnels under the river are too crowded and traffic jams are spilling into where people live. Plus, this road is super important for Europe's transport, linking cities like Paris and Amsterdam. But finally, Antwerp is close to adding the final piece to the puzzle with a project called the Oosterweel Link. It's plenty of construction work that might seem straightforward, but is actually quite complicated, causing obstacles for both the workers and the residents. The big challenge with this construction project in Belgium comes down to its location. There's a river and the Albert Canal in the way, making it tough to finish the ring road. That's why it's called Belgium's Project of the Century. It started in the mid-1990s and is now being worked on by a company called Lantis for the Flemish government. This isn't just any old road project like the M25 in the UK. There are many tunnels being made in special ways. It's a huge task that needs a lot of time, money and know-how, and there's still more to do. Experts think it might take another year for Belgium's construction industry to get back to how it was before the pandemic. This situation has affected investors in many areas. The smart ones are putting their money into different markets, like fine art, which does well even when the economy is down. Fine art doesn't follow the usual market trends, so it's a good alternative for investors. Building in the middle of a city is tough. There's a lot to handle, but we've got a cool tour of the engineering work for you without getting too bogged down in details. First, we have the Scheldt Tunnel, a big tunnel being built under the river Scheldt. The construction site for the tunnel entrance is massive. When you're there, you're blown away by the size of everything, the dig, the engineering and all the activity. The tunnel is crucial for finishing the ring road. It will help cars and bikes travel under the river. The tunnel will have six lanes for cars and a separate path for bikes. Workers had to dig a big pit up to 25 meters deep and get rid of the water in the soil before they could start building the tunnel, which is what they're currently doing. What stands out in this project is the incredible method used to build the new tunnel. It's called the immersed tube method and it's a brilliant display of engineering. To make this 1,800 meter tunnel, they have put together eight massive pieces, each weighing around 60,000 tons underwater. Here's how they do it. First, they dig a big hole in Zeebrugge, about 100 kilometers from Antwerp, where there's more room. In this space, they're making eight huge concrete tunnel sections. Once they're done, they'll seal the ends of each piece fill the hole with water and float the sections to the top. Then, using tugboats and waiting for the perfect weather, 
They'll move these giant pieces 180 kilometers through the sea, around the coast, and into Antwerp. They'll carefully lower each piece into a trench on the riverbed, one by one, without disrupting the ships that pass by. To connect the sections, they'll pump out the water between them, creating a vacuum that pulls the pieces together tightly, making sure no water can get through. After they seal them up, they'll bury them under the riverbed, and just like that, you have a tunnel. Building this tunnel is a massive task that needs very precise work, which keeps the construction team on their toes. Immersed tube tunnels usually go straight, but this one has a curve, which is why each piece is shaped a bit differently. It's a complex and fascinating process to watch and be a part of. At the end of the tunnel, there's the new Oosterville Junction. Here, cars will come up to the surface for a bit. They can either go towards the port or dive into another set of new tunnels. The whole junction is designed to blend into the surroundings, so it's being built lower than the land around it to keep it out of sight. Now let's talk about the canal tunnels. These tunnels will connect the Oosterville Junction to the Ring Road. They're building four tunnels, each 2.5 kilometers long, under the Albert Canal, and they're stacking them in pairs. This design isn't typical, but it's chosen so that drivers can go two different ways when they reach the main ring road. It also helps save space across the canal, which is important because large ships use it, and they need to keep enough room for them. To connect these new tunnels to the existing ring road, they have to tear down a big viaduct that's currently there. In its place, they'll build more tunnels under the canal and create a vast green space with parks, bike paths and walking trails. But before they can remove the viaduct, they need to build a temporary road next to it. This way, cars can still get by while the new tunnels are being made. It's a complex process, but it's all part of improving the city's infrastructure and making the area nicer for everyone. As we wrap up our tour, you're probably curious about the cost of all this. The total budget is around 7 billion euro, which is roughly 7.6 billion US dollars. The Flemish government is loaning most of the money, but the European Investment Bank is also contributing 500 million euro. They plan to pay back this money through tolls. Since the project started in 2018, there's been a lot of activity in and around Antwerp, and they aim to finish by 2030. This goal is part of Route Plan 2030, a larger effort to make Antwerp more navigable and accessible, with an emphasis on green transportation. The plan is to reduce car travel from 70% to 50%, encouraging people to use public transport, bikes, electric scooters or simply walk. A significant construction for the Oosterville project is a new park and ride, where drivers can park and take a tram to the city centre. It's all part of a move towards a more positive and sustainable urban environment. You might wonder why it's taken so long to get here, since the project was first proposed in 1996. The delay was mainly due to over a decade of debate on how to proceed. Initially, the plan was for a bridge, not the canal tunnels. This bridge would have been huge, but in a 2009 referendum, the public voted against it. People were worried about the environmental impacts and felt the project was being pushed by the government. There was also some resistance to the proposed name, Langavapa, which is a reference to a folklore giant known for towering over and troubling Antwerp citizens. In retrospect, that might not have been the best choice for a project name. After many years of discussion and gathering opinions, in 2014, the government of Flanders, the region of Belgium where Antwerp is situated, gave the green light to the plan that's currently in progress. It took a while to kick off, and there's still some major engineering work ahead, but now there's hope and a sense of progress. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to our channel for more mind-blowing mega projects.